There are some deficiencies. Now, here's another thing to really, really get clear. Okay? Meat eaters, and I'll, I'll tell you, about 50% of the people who come to me are making the transition into vegan. So about 50% of the people I see for evaluation are, are, are eating meat. Okay? So I get a, a pretty good feeling, but I'm also giving the research. About 90% of all pregnant women in the United States are deficient in DHA. A incredibly a long chain omega-3. You need it for brain. You need it for emotions. You need it for a vision. It's like 90% deficient? And guess what? I'm talking, this is all research done on meat eaters, okay? But it's also true for vegans. 80%, again, meat eaters are deficient in magnesium, okay? 75 to 95% of people are deficient in iodine. And if I, people are going to be successful, we do need to take supplements in this day and age. There's just too much going on. So I use a, a, an I minus iodine, which is the actual, actual real form that you need for thyroid. But for, let's get clear iodine is needed for brain function, I mentioned. Uh, mothers that have adequate iodine, their kids have 13% higher IQ. 13 point higher IQ. Um, we need it for heart. Big deal. Every, almost everybody I see with heart problems is iodine deficient. Adrenals, ovary production of estrogen. It's like, whoa. And then the skin is the biggest organ for holding iodine. Isn't that interesting? My point. Everybody I see is, you know, in America, that's that 95%. Almost everybody needs iodine, okay? You can't be successful vegan if you aren't taking some supplements. Actually, you can't be successful in anything. Because this is meat eaters. This is mostly on meat eaters, all these data. Okay? And of course, B12, and it is true. Vegans have less B12 than meat eaters. But what's also true, and this is something I learned at Columbia, just randomly, uh, they were doing research, giving people shots of B12, and I was amazed. 30% of the people had amazingly rebounded, felt great. What does that tell you? It means 30, 40% of the people, meat eaters were deficient in B12. That was my first clue that we, there was a, a bias here. So, and that's only at 200 nanograms. If we go to 400 to 450 nanograms to lower your, your homocysteine and things like that, oh my goodness. You know, maybe 90% of vegans and 80% of, of meat eaters are deficient. What's my bottom line? Everybody needs to take a B12 supplement. And we use the living B12 supplement that, that are available that are made from bacteria. Just like you get when you eat meat. But meat eaters need to take it too. That's my point. Because meat eaters, a lot, are deficient in B12. Carnosine is another thing. The only way to get adequate carnosine which uh, is very important for rejuvenation and um, decreasing uh, what we call glycosylation, which is the unnatural bonding of, uh, uh, of glucose or fructose to the protein. You need to eat three steaks a day to have adequate. So no meters doing that. I mean, maybe some are, but most people aren't. So it's an easy supplement. There's a vegan uh, thing. It's, it's a bacteria-based thing. And, you need a, like an eighth of a teaspoon. You can get all this stuff at the Tree of Life. Obviously, I've worked out all these things and I searched all over the world to get the right stuff. So we have a vegan carnosine. And that's extremely important for diabetics, but it's really for everybody in that. Minerals. In 1936, the Congress of the United States said 99% of the population's deficient in minerals. So everybody needs some level of mineral supplements, and we do a lot of that. Okay, so 85% uh, of Americans are deficient in, in vitamin D. Everybody, okay? I'm talking meat eaters, because this is all done on meat eaters. There's enough vegans to do any research on, to be meaningful, okay? <laughs> We're maybe 1% or 2% of the population. So this is all, everything I'm talking about is done on meat eaters. Okay, so when you're in an argument about, well, vegans don't get enough nutrition, guess what? You got the answer, right? Nobody's getting enough nutrition. So that really makes your life easy when you get that. Um, people have trouble converting to, to vitamin A. About 50% of the population, we do need a vitamin A supplement. So those are the kind of things that everyone's deficient in. 
Just kind of keep that in mind as you look at the picture. It's like, what's going on? It's like everybody. So don't fall into vegans have an insufficient diet. It's just nonsense. Okay? It's important to keep that in mind. There is a difference between cuisine and macronutrient ratio. And this is absolutely key to understand the success. Cuisine is, well, there's live food cuisine, there's a French cuisine, there's Italian cuisine. It's a style. Okay? Like we'll do, you know, French live food, Italian live food, it's style. Macronutrient balance is your key. Okay? That's the ratio of protein, carbohydrates, and fats to each other. And here's where it gets really interesting. There's a new field called nutrigenomics. How many people have heard of that? This is important, okay? What's it say? It says on chromosome 19, okay, our genes, it determines how much fat, how much protein, okay, and how much carbohydrate each person needs. And that's the genetics that comes from your mother, and it's in the mitochondrial DNA. Now, what I just said is what you need as a unique person with 20 to 30,000 genes. 200,000 gene variations. You got to work this out. Are you a person that needs more protein or less protein? There's no one answer. We're all unique. We're not a bunch of cows who just eat grass. Okay, kind of keep that in mind, okay? Don't take it personally. You're not a cow, okay? But what I'm saying is it's genetic. And our job to be successful, and this is really the key, is how to figure that out. Now, the Ayurvedics a few thousand years ago already talked about different types. You have a kapha, pitta, and vata, and they're different types and lifestyle. And that's another lecture, but I'm just making a point. Not a new concept. Uh, and we have things called fast oxidizers, slow oxidizers, parasympathetic. What they're describing <coughs> since the 1930s, okay, is we have to individualize our diet. So I wrote the book Conscious Eating. Why, why did I write that? Because we should be conscious. There is no one diet. Please get that. And you have to figure it out because you're a unique book.